Hey friends, this is Nate coming to you from my house in Ozark, Missouri. And this is a little thing we're going to call Chords and Coffee. All right. Before I get started, I want to give a little shout out to my brother John. He got me this Black Rifle Lava Panther <laughs> Coffee. Look at the artwork on that. That is awesome. And listen to this. It says on the back, only a sick shredder like the Panther can ride fire roasted gnar into a delicious cup of coffee. That, my friend, is good storytelling. Shoot, it made the coffee taste better. Not even gonna lie to you. And so why do I tell you that? Well, music is not just language. It's storytelling. It's storytelling. You ever watch a guitar player, listen to somebody playing? Or I mean, I, I watch guitar YouTube videos all the time, and sometimes I'll see somebody playing a bunch of stuff, especially like over a dominant seven kind of thing or a bluesy thing. Here's like... <laughs> there's like a bunch of different chords just kind of flying by, right? That was kind of an exaggerated example. There's a lot going on there, but what is happening? Is that really like one chord, two chords, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine? No, those are all just G7 ideas, right? And if you don't know what's going on or how to do that, just keep watching this because at the end of it, you will, all right? So why did I pick G7 for this first video? Well, I'm gonna tell you, because there's a lot of songs that we like that are essentially some kind of blues-based, dominant seven, tonal center, musical expression, right? What that means is that the greatest point of release is some kind of dominant seven chord. So this is like a lot of rock and roll, this is a lot of blues, a lot of jazzy kind of stuff, and even country stuff, right? So it's really important for your chord vocabulary, but more importantly, your sense of expression and storytelling over a seven chord. To have a lot to say, right? To have a lot of different details. Well, where does that come from? Well, chords have a relationship to one another. And when you see a seven chord, a dominant seven chord, not a major seven chord, a dominant seven chord, a chord with a flat seven. So in this case, G with an F in it old cowboy G like that, right? But I'm playing like this. It's like the E shape. When you see that, that chord, here's the first thing. Dominant seven chords belong to, they are the fifth of something else. So in this case, C. So G7 belongs to C, right? So I want to get you to all that. But in order to get you to that, we need to know the chords in the key of C. This will be quick and easy. If you already know this, just fast forward a little bit, all right? So C major seven, just good old fashioned C major seven, straight out of the Mel Bay book here. Bar across the third fret you, with your index finger. You've got your ring finger here on the fifth fret of the D. You've got your middle finger on the fourth fret of the G and pinky is on the fifth fret of the B. Boom, C major seven. Remember that shape because we're coming back to it on the eighth fret for F major seven, right? Next chord up, D minor seven. You know this, Doobie Brothers. Right? All this is, is like an A minor slid all the way up here to like the, um, just above the fifth fret, so on the sixth. And if I'm barring this, I've got my index finger right across the top here from the A to E. I've got my middle finger on the B string on the sixth fret, G string doing nothing because the index finger's got it with the bar, ring finger on the seventh fret of the D. And guess what? E minor seven's the same way, right? And then this F major seven starting on the eighth fret, it's the same shape as this, right? Now, time to get scrunchy. Up here on the 10th fret, instinctively your middle finger will come here and help your index finger, hey friend, form the human capo, right? And then your ring finger will be on the 12th fret of the D and your pinky on the 12th fret of the B. And then finally for this A minor, not finally, almost finally, this shape right here, colossally awesome. We'll do a whole thing just on this shape because there's so much goodness inside of this as far as the movement of it. Anyway, but A minor seven, right? 12th fret of the A string, middle finger, right? Index finger, 10th fret of the D, right? And then ring finger, 12th fret of the G, and then pinky, 13th fret of the B. Right? And then 
finally, B minor seven flat five, another awesome shape. Easier to make it down here and then we'll slide it up here. Second fret of the A string, skip the D and go to the G, second fret with your middle finger. And then third fret of the D with our ring finger and then third fret of the B, slide it up. That was a lot of chords, but there's a reason for that madness. Right, let's just take these four right here, kind of the... That Alicia Keys tune. If we take just those, just those four right there. Just a second ago when I was doing all that G7 stuff. In my mind, I'm just thinking of these four shapes. Right? Look at this chord, this C major seven. If I take if I take off my index finger, what do I have left? Well, you know what that is? That's an E minor. Look, it's a G, it's a B, and it's an E, right? So another way to think about C major seven, it's an E minor over C. I'm getting back to G7, be patient. But isn't that cool, right? So if that's an E minor, down a whole step, that's a D minor, right? 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 And then up here, if I go to this, back to this progression here, if I go to this next chord, this D minor, sliding up to E minor, when I was doing that G7 things, Slow down here. This is just an E minor down to a D minor, an E minor down to a D minor, right? And then this F major seven. F major seven, this little shape right here, as E minor relates to C major seven, A minor relates to F major seven more on that later but essentially in my mind I'm just doing these little chord shapes that exist inside of this C diatonic chord scale right and so the idea is is that when you see some of these chord structures again music is just storytelling and just like any good storytelling you've got turns of phrase you've got ways to describe things you've got rhythm and pauses in your phrases right well, if I'm just combining these different shapes, now you might be going, well, yeah, Nate, that's great, but I'm not creative. Yes, you are. You are creative, okay? You just need to find the colors that you like to paint with. You might not like the normal colors that folks paint their room, but I guarantee you, you've got some chord colors that you like to paint with, which by the way, is the most Bob Ross thing I've ever said in my entire life, and it's your own video. So anyway, <laughs> there you go. These little shapes here that I'm sliding around, I'm essentially going back and forth between an E minor and an F, or an E minor and a D minor, and then an E minor and a D minor again, right? And the, the ideas just sort of manifest themselves because if I'm just trying to hold down a groove, and that would be the way that I would encourage you to practice it too, is, I'm holding down a little G octave here, third fret and fifth fret with my index to my pinky. I mean, that's almost like your Grateful Dead kind of jam, right? But that's, there's a lot of different places where that's applicable, like in the blues, I like can Just right there, just juxtaposing C major chords over a G in just two two chord shapes, E minor, D minor. There is a whole awesome color palette to tell stories with, like Lava Panther. Hope this helps you. Hope you had fun. Would love to see comments and things below here. And any ideas that you have for future little chords and coffee conversations like this, or even just questions, I appreciate you. Thanks for watching.